To all my subscribers, sorry I've been away a little bit. It's been hard for me to make videos during this transitional period of time where I'm going to be switching some jobs. But I'm back and I've got a topic I want to talk about tonight. Normally I'm trying to be very positive and always bring positive things to the world. But I'm going to be a little bit negative tonight and just because I'm passionate about communications. Okay, first of all, I'm going to start this whole thing out with a, a message that I got from one of my subscribers, or maybe not a subscriber, maybe just somebody that might, might just be a troll, but I get one or two of these a week. It says, it's hard to take you seriously with that accent, and they put this on one of my videos, and so I sent them a message back, and I said, thanks, I hate to be taken seriously. <laughs> and so I get this, like I say, two or three times a week, uh, somebody comes on and they make some wise ass comment about my Appalachian accent. Well, you know, my wife, I'm going to tell you something my wife does. She sings this little song. She watches a British show on BBC called Miranda. And uh, there's a little character on the, by the way, watch Miranda sometime. It's hilarious. Go on your Netflix or whatever, Amazon Prime, whatever, and watch Miranda. Maybe she's on the Hulu as well. And it's Miranda Hart, and there's a little blonde woman on there that sings this song, uh, What Have You Done Today to Make You Feel Proud? It's a um, Heather Smalls or something song. I'm, I'm not real familiar with the song, but Nikki will go around singing it because it's in that that uh, show. Long story short there is sometimes I, uh, she'll sing that, and I'll think, what have I done today to make me feel proud? And I can't often answer that. I can't say very often I've done anything to make me feel proud. But today, I'll tell you the story, there was a lady uh, talking to some people behind me, and I heard her say, I think her name was, maybe it had been Carla Jean or something like that, or Clara Jean or something like that, and she goes, I'm, I'm going to try to do her accent here, Clara Jean was my name when I was in Redneck, Tennessee. I had to grow up there, but I escaped from there, and I changed my name to Carly, and and, and and she talked this really fake accent. You could tell she had no pride in where she was from. She had no pride in her heritage at all. Let me tell you about my accent, folks. When I went to college, I went to Mars Hill College, which is in the Appalachian Mountains, just north of Asheville, North Carolina. But even when I was there, I was tempted to try to change the way I talk. You know, you, go in, you get into a class, you don't want your your professors to think you're stupid or something, right? And, and, and you hear all, even the people you've gone to school with in high school, some of my other high school fr folks went to the same college, and you might hear them saying, talking like this, and I, I'll be honest, they sounded like dicks to me, honestly. I would just listen to and, and I tried it for a little while. I tried sort of pseudo-changing my accent and trying to speak a little bit more proper and pronounce my words perfectly. Yeah, it sounded wrong. And you know what? What it did, it was it was me being a big old phony. And I made the decision right off the bat, like within a couple of weeks of my freshman year in college, they're going to respect me because I have a command of the English language. Uh, they're not going to worry about my accent. And in the end, I end up being a magna cum laude English and communications major. I've never changed the way that I've spoken. It's never changed my success in the world. It may have prejudiced some people against me. Uh, the fact that I don't maybe fit their little narrow idea of what a ed an educated person person should sound like. Well, now I'm sounding really bad. My point of making it is this: I am proud that I hung on to what I am, and I didn't try to become something fake and foolish. And you know. I am passionate about this. Um, I'm glad I'm from from rural Appalachia. I'm glad I grew up poor, and we did grow up poor, and things were difficult, and it's still a very hard place to make a living. But it, by the grace of God, not not you know, not, I don't want to brag on myself. I'm not bragging on myself. God Almighty has helped me it's, in so many ways. And uh, if if anybody, I try to keep religion off off my channel for the most part. But if anybody ever wants to engage me in a religious talk, I'll tell you about my faith in Jesus Christ and the Lord, but I'm not going to like get that's not now's not the time and place to do that. We can do, do that offline if you like. But I will say this, I'm proud that I didn't change what I am, who I am, and feel uh, ashamed of where I came from. I'm proud that I'm from the Appalachian Highlands. I'm proud I'm from some some of the poorest counties in western North Carolina. Good people are there. 
uh, some of the best people in the world and some of the smartest people in the world. They had to be super smart to learn how to survive in those tough places. I'm getting off that high horse for a minute. One thing I do want to tell you is uh, what, I mean, so I've got a little bit of an ax to grind tonight. Communications. I'm, I've got another GoPro Hero 4. I'm going to shoot a little bit of video of something that I've done. Now that I'm leaving Carolinas, I'm not, I'm not picking on Carolinas Healthcare. Carolinas Healthcare is an outstanding organization. But I have really heard some, some weird stuff uh, over the 10 months that I've been there. And so I'm going to show a little bit of it here. This is a typical sheet here. I'm going to hold my GoPro Hero 4 over this. And this is, um, I found out going into some of my meetings I would go into, that people in Charlotte talk very strange. Now, a lot of these people are from North Carolina. And uh, I'm not trying to be sexist here. It, men do this, can do the same thing, but largely it's women. I'll be in groups with women. And here's what I keep hearing over and over and over again. Like, um, so, okay, sure, yeah, right, whatever, you know. So what I would do is sit in these meetings and every time, and usually, usually I wouldn't start doing this until about 10 minutes in after I'd already heard 30 or 40 likes, um, so, yeah, right, you know, whatever's. Uh, but then typically about 10 or 15 minutes into a one hour meeting, I would start keeping track of it. And I'm listening to everything. I'm trying to stay up with my job as well. But I would find this fascinating how much time, but you see your um, um, is far and away the number one thing. I, I don't want you to think this is just it. This is where I ran out of space. And here we are in the same meeting, starting a whole, no, I, I started me a whole nother little section of like, um, so, okay, whatever, you know, sure, right, yeah. And I put down whatnot here because somebody said whatnot. And I thought that, that, that I had heard it a couple times before too. <laughs> so I, I just started tracking it there. But this folks, okay, imagine this. Uh, two or three of the, of the ladies in the, those meetings would say, um, and usually it would take about that long to say it. It would be like, um, so it was like the meeting I was in, um, they just like weren't really paying any like attention to anything. So, um, it was really like hard for me to like get my point across. So, um, that's a typical sentence. I have actual recordings of this, people, people talking this way. If if one of these people in this meeting says, um, and it takes a second, and we see here, I counted their 92 seconds that it took to say these amount of ums, and here we had a whole bunch of other ums, and then you got, you know, the so's usually go fast, and then the likes, like is, is this rampant in some of these meetings. You know what it's like? It's like, like is like, like the only like word that they like, like. And it's unbelievable. These are people with master's degrees working for a corporate communications and outreach department of a multi-billion dollar corporation. And this was the way they communicated. I'm going to turn my GoPro here off for just a minute. So, there, here I am saying so. There are always words that we overuse. I've realized as I've gone through you know, this whole experiment of doing YouTube videos that there are words I overuse. Uh, one of them is awesome. The other one is probably excellent. And um, I realized that I probably picked that up even back in the 80s, uh, watching stuff like Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure or Wayne's World or whatever, party on excellent, you know. But anyway, I used to say you know a lot. The thing I guess I'm proud of also is though that I have tried to make sure that when I have something to say, I say it. And when I don't have something to say, I don't say it. I don't try to formulate what I'm going to say in my head by stretching out a big, long, um, and I'm not exaggerating. Some of the ums go on that long. You know, one of the last things I'll say, and I hear it every single day. And so I'll, maybe you guys can light me where this comes from. Thank you. Thank you is an awesome thing to say to someone. And when you say thank you to a person, you should be sincere about that. I, I like to say thank you to my subscribers. There's a, a, a very strange little insincere thank you that's going around, at least in the circles that I'm traveling in these days. I mean, it's rampant everywhere. And it's like this. It's like, 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. It, usually it's something that's said real quickly as you're walking away after I've done four hours of work for somebody and they come by and they make a few little changes to it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, one of the things, when you slow it down, I've actually recorded this. <laughs> it sounds like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Or, thank you. Or, one lady said, thank you the other day. Thank you. But I guess the point I'm trying to make about the thank you thing is, where did that come from? Uh, if you tell a person to say a gasoline tank, the same person, they'll say gasoline tank. And tank and thanks sound the same. They have the same letters in them. But now they say think instead of thank. And instead of you, if you tell, if you were to ask them to say you in general assembly, they would say you in general assembly with a you in it, right? But instead of saying you, they say yo or yow or yow or yo or what? <laughs> There's just some weird. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. I get this all the time, and, and it's almost like almost to the point where it's disrespectful. It's, it's this little passion thing. You know what? If you're gonna tell somebody thanks, look them in the eye and tell them, hey, thanks, man. I appreciate the amount of work that you put into that. You really gave it your all. Thanks a lot. That means something to somebody, not a thank you and walking off. And that's what I get a lot. <laughs> so I'm not complaining. I'm just saying from a communications point of view, I don't know. It's hard for me to take insincerity. It's hard for me to take people who are fake. It's hard for me to take people who should know how to put their words together and their thoughts together and have something constructive to say and not waste your time. And I hope I've not wasted too much of yours tonight. Tell me what you think about this. Tell me, maybe I'm just being a real curmudgeon here and a real butthole. And if I am, then I can take that. Go ahead and tell me. But are there weird things that people are saying? Are there trends in the language that are bothering you like they're bothering me? The like them, um, so, okay, sure, yeah, right, you know, whatever thing is driving me nuts. If I were over an ad agency or a corporate communications or marketing or communicate, you know, any kind of, I think I would have to like rake people over the coals for that. Got to go take care of the situation. Thanks for watching, folks. I really do appreciate you. Thank you, yo. 